Hi, I'm Paweł Spechalski and today let's talk about iNav tuning. No, in this video I will not show you how to tune your multi-rotor or airplane on iNav from A to Z. Uh, because that is just too much of a topic. Today we will cover only the new, one of the new filters that appeared with the iNav 2.6 and most probably will stay with us for quite a while. I'm talking about the unicorn filter. So in today's video I will show you how to set up your unicorn filter and then how to tune it to obtain the best possible results. The first question we have to answer is what the heck is this unicorn filter? And unfortunately there is no a simple answer to that question. Unicorn filter is a prediction filter. It's based on the Kalman filtering present in the IMU flight for quite a while ported last year to the INAF world. Some people will say that absolutely this thing is not a Kalman because it would be ab abomination to call this thing a Kalman filter where it isn't and to some extent those people are correct. UAV Tech, I'm talking about you. And on the other hand, the other people will say that absolutely this thing is the Kalman filter, it's fantastic and it's the best thing since the sliced bread. And those people to some extent are correct, but not always because we do have to remember that Kalman filtering is not really the um, a hammer that will solve all your problems. It has some downsides and tuning of this thing is one of the problems. Bottom line, Unicorn filter is the prediction filtering that analyzes the input and then based on the quality on the input, it tries to predict what will be the next value outputted by itself. This is why Tuning on the unicorn filter, because this is how we will be calling this thing uh, in the INAF world, has to be done on, based on the series of the experiments. However, it's relatively those are relatively simple experiments and we will go into the details in just a moment. Bottom line, however, is that, yeah, this thing works and um, yeah, flying with this thing enabled has some really like it just flies better with the unicorn filter comparing to the situation without the unicorn filter. A note over here, no, you will not be able to see the output of the unicorn filter in the gyro traces on the black box explorer in INAV because we decided, but because this is a prediction filtering, we should not really pollute this uh, thing inside of the uh, of the gyro information in the black box. In ca it can, however, be recorded as the PID measurement, not the gyro data itself. But now let's go to the practical side. The unicorn filter settings are located in the configurator in the PID tuning tab in the filters sub tab. By default, if you are flying multi rotors, this thing should be already on with the default Q factor of 200 and the window size or 4. If, however, you are on the fixed wing, on the airplane or whatever like that, uh, don't bother with the unicorn filter. It will not help you much. This thing is mainly designed for the multi-rotor world. Should you leave it on? Yes, definitely you should leave it on on the multi-rotors because this is what makes INAF 2.6 fly great. And let's answer the question, what is the Q factor and what is the window size? The Q factor of the unicorn filter is the information of how much we can trust the gyro signal that is fed into the filter itself. This is why the higher the Q factor, the less 
filtering the unicorn filter will do that means we will have a smaller phase delay and the less chance that the rapid changes inside of the gyro data fed into the unicorn filter uh, will be applied on the data the lower the value that means that the signal is probably more noise polluted we cannot trust it as much and we should apply more filtering into the data and we should rely more on the prediction on the value than just the raw value from the flight point of view, we kind of should have a signal that has less possible phase delay and less prediction. However, if you have too much noise in your data, you just cannot use the raw value. You have to filter the noise out, not to um, just oscillate the whole system too much. This is why the tuning of the unicorn filter is mostly about finding the correct Q factor that works great on your setup. We will cover this part in just a moment. The second setting of the unicorn filter is the window's size. It defaults at 4 and it's just the amount of data that is used to analyze the quality of the incoming signal. In general, the more steady and the free stylish style you fly, the higher the window size should be. The more rapid response and rapid changes on the filtering you want, for example, when you are doing erasing, um, then the window size should be smaller. Default 4 is rather closer to the racing word however not really strictly and the higher you will go with this uh, window size value it will work better with cruise or long range or just nice flippity floppy around the tree however my advice is not to touch this value in the beginning at all it has the secondary value and you can tune and feel the difference between the window sizes on your flying machine once you already tune the q factor in this tutorial we will rather increase the q factor uh, sorry uh, ignore the window size value and that means that we will just leave it on default 4. And now the creme de la creme of this video. How to tune the unicorn filter? It's very simple. Just go flying with the default value. After a flight or two, when you have the feeling of how your quad or hexa or octacopter behaves in the air, increase the Q factor by 50 and fly again. Observe if do you think it behaves better or worse? Are there any positive changes in the behavior of the flight? If you feel that now it flies slightly better or you cannot really feel any difference comparing to the previous uh, value, increase the Q factor by 50 again and exactly do the same thing fly one or two packs and observe is if there is a progress no change or some kind of the degradation by the degradation what do i mean by the degradation of the flight performance some oscillation some strange noise from the motor some uh, bounce back some overshoot during the maneuvers at one point with the increasing of the q factor by the 50 uh, every time you will know Notice that something is happening that should not really be happening and the, your multi-rotor is not flying better but actually worse. This means that you reached the topmost value of the Q factor that gives you this nice balance between prediction filtering and the low phase delay and you are just feeding too much of the garbage into the PID controller. This means you should go back 50 to the previous value where it was still flying great and this new actually the, the previous value of the q factor is your base basic 
Q factor level that now you can fine tune if you really, really want to. This time increasing and decreasing the Q factor, not by 50, but for example by 10 or 20 steps. However, I be very honest, I'm not doing this uh, at all. I just increase uh, in steps by 50, find this moment when it starts flying worse, and just go back 50 to the previous grade value. And that's all. There is really no science, no extra uh, science, no extra tools required to do it. All you have to do is, well, just fly, increase the Q factor as long as it's flying better, the motors are not getting hot and nothing is going wrong. And then when something starts to go wrong, just go back to the previous or two values back. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching and until the next one. Bye bye.